Hey guys, Midwest Prepper here. Um, this video is going to be about tactical nylon. And uh, I'll briefly cover a little bit about body armor, but we're not going to get too in-depth in about body armor. I'll save that for another video. Um, this particular vest is the quick-release plate carrier model from, I believe, Condor. I know Condor has gotten some flack, but uh, at the same time, really, whenever you start to compare it to other stuff, these guys have really picked their game up. Um, this vest has got excellent stitching, all metal zippers. Um, I mean, all the way around, the nylon's tough as hell. And compared to even uh, some of the surplus and um, issued gear that I have, I mean, the nylon's right on right on par with it. The stitching's actually better, uh, from what I can tell. And I haven't had any problems with this. Uh, granted, this vest is fairly new, but I've used their products before, and I haven't worn any of them out yet. And I've I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty rough on my stuff. If it's not built well, it doesn't last long. Uh, the advantages to the Molly type vest or modular systems is you can get what you want or what you need and place it where you want it on the vest to make it work for you. Um, for instance, on this one, I have an IFAC, uh, the kangaroo mag pouches. Um, pistol mag pouches, the nice part about these is they'll hold either one double stack or two single stack mags in each pouch. Uh, the gadget pouch, which is great for, you know, all your stuff as far as a small set of binoculars or uh, extra batteries for lights or optics, uh, all that type of crap. Um, like I said, I really haven't got a chance to completely outfit this one as far as putting stuff in the IFAC and um, up in the gadget pouch. It also has uh, another larger utility pouch that I got on here. It's got a radio pouch on the rear of it. But uh, the other thing with this vest is by pulling up in this tab and ripping that cord, it will completely let the vest fall off of you uh, if you need to, say, if you're injured, whatever the case may be. But, you know, the vest can be taken off in a hurry. It's a quick release plate carrier. Uh, this vest will accommodate soft body armor and uh, it has uh, the separate pouches to accommodate for uh, sappy plates or hard armor plates, standalone plates, whatever you guys want to call them. But uh, all in all, I believe this particular setup was right around 200 250 bucks. Um, you really can't go wrong with it. Uh, it's modular all the way around. All the Molly webbing was in spec everywhere on the vest. Um, no complaints about it. Uh, I'll move on to another vest. This vest is called the Interceptor Vest. Um, the next model up they got from this has the same insides, but it has what they call the IOTV, which is the Improved Outer Tactical Vest. Um, this one is called the OTV for Outer Tactical Vest. Uh, this one has partial molly webbing on it. Uh, you can stack some of your mag pouches on here whatever else on the back side. It, it's not compatible for a hydration carrier. Uh, you could probably retrofit it to one, but what's the point? Just get the, uh, get the IOTV outer shell and place your old panels in there and you'll be good to go. Um, one of the common misconceptions is that these are fragmentation dust. They are not fragmentation dust. They're meant to take some fragmentation, but uh, they are actually ballistic panels. Uh, this particular one's made from point blank, which I think all of them were. And it's the military equivalent to level 3A body armor. Um, the other thing with these is these do have the ability to accommodate hard armor plates. I believe this particular model of plate is the Gamma Plus, which is rated for 7.62 by 5.4, which would be the Dragon Off round. Uh, they can take multiple hits uh, before they're rendered useless. I mean, once it's hit, obviously you want to trade it in, but if you take two hits in succession, then you'll be good to go. Um, but that's enough about the ballistics protection part of it. Um, the one advantage that the uh, vest I showed you before with the kangaroo pouches had, and the disadvantage that vest also had, is when comparing these mag pouches, the one thing that I found for me is, unless I'm really moving around, I mean, especially if I'm just at the range, I like to tuck the back side, the, the, the flap, into the back side of the pouch. 
Otherwise, what winds up happening is this thing, every time you pull one back out, it wants to secure itself back down, and it becomes a royal pain in the ass because it never wants to go down in the one direction or the other. Or should I say in the right direction, it wants to go one direction or the other. That and once you've pulled one mag out of here, you got your, your other mag sitting there flopping around. Um, now the advantage to these that I found is the fact that they fit the AK magazines very well. As opposed to on the vest that I just showed you, it's a pretty tight fit for the 5.56 rounds, or for the 5.56 magazines, M16, M4, AR mags, whatever you want to call them. It's a tight fit for those, and it's damn near impossible to shove an AK mag in there. You really got to work at it to get a, even the, one of the surplus steel mags from an AK in there. But like a Tadco or any of the polymer magazines, good luck. It, it ain't going to happen. But uh, these will accommodate two of the uh, AK or polymer AK magazines. Um, other than that, another advantage to these is if you are looking for ballistics protection, uh, whenever you get them, a lot of times, I mean, depending on how you got them, uh, they come with the uh, deltoid protectors, groin protector, yoke, collar, all the shit that you usually rip off with the second it's issued to you. But, uh, you know, they, these, these things come with quite a bit of ballistics protection. Um, other than that, price points on these, we're not even going to go over it because it just really all depends on how you acquire it and, uh, you know, how, how old the vest is. But other than that, uh, the nylon on this compared to the other one, yeah, this stuff, stuff is held. Uh, the pouches on here are, are Blackhawk pouches, by the way. Um, but other than that, yeah, the nylon's tough. Uh, this secures a little bit different than some of them. You just got your straps that you can cinch on the back side. Um, this flat back here just opens up, and this is where your dropping plate for your, your rear sappy plate would go. Um, with these, I believe they also... Yeah, and it comes with the uh, side sappy, or the attachment for the side sappy plates. Uh, this one, to get into the vest, it's a front entry. The ballistics panels fold back over themselves. And this is how you would down and off the vest. As far as the other one, you have to, uh, quite a few things you got to do to get back inside of the vest. It's not that complicated, but this one's a little bit easier to get into. <coughs> uh, these are a royal pain in the ass to climb into if uh, you have the front rear sappies in them, too. Uh, other than that, that pretty much covers it for the tactical nylons. Um, if you can get one of these cheap, man, it's an excellent vest. Um, if not, if you got a little bit of money to toy with, you don't jump into something else like what I showed you. You know, it doesn't even have to be that brand, but something along the lines of it being modular. The other one's a little bit better, being how it has the, the molly webbing all the way up, whereas this one doesn't, and it has molly webbing on the back side as well. But that's pretty much it as far as the tactical vests go. If you guys got any other questions or want anything else more in depth, just uh, you know, shoot me a PM or a video response, and, and we'll go over that. All right, guys, talk to you later.